Mother of devoted love, most blessed Virgin Mary, with all my heart and all my affection, I take refuge in you, though I am a poor and undeserving sinner. You stood by your most dear son as he was hanging on the cross. Stand mercifully by me, poor sinner though I am, and by all priests who today offer this sacrifice here and in all our holy church. With the help of your gracious presence, may we offer you a sac may we offer a sacrifice that is right and acceptable in the presence of the Most High and Undivided Trinity. Amen. Enter Tantaphon. Wait for the Lord, be strong, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. The intention for this Mass is offered for Nancy Sherry. It is Tuesday of the fifth week of Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit, brethren. Let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Or, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in the desert, where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people serp serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a serap and mount it to on a pole, and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole, and whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at it, looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. O Lord, hear, hear my, my prayer, prayer and, and let, let my cry come to you. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. O oh Lord, hear my, my prayer, prayer and let, let my cry come, come to you. Let this be written for generation to come, and let his future create praise to the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height, from heaven he beheld the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. The Lord
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away, and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning, I have so much to say about you in condemnation. But the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The tradition of the Church has four main ways that we can read Scripture. First and foremost is, is the literal, to understand what the text is actually saying, to understand the context, the history, the times, the culture, to understand the facts and the deeds of the event itself, the, the literal reading of Scripture. And so we can't put this aside lightly. But then flowing from this can come the other three spiritual ways we read Scripture. Particularly in the Old Testament, we can see how all of the Old Testament is a preparation for Jesus, who is the fulfillment of all these promises, all these facts and deeds. So we have a clear parallel that the Church presents us today, of the serpent being lifted up, people gazing on the serpent and being healed, and Jesus identifying himself with this action. As he is being lifted up, as we gaze on him who we have pierced, we too can be healed. This is certainly true and beautiful, but we can lose sight of the grittiness of this reality. We can lose sight of the real horror of what this entails of how the Lord afflicted his people because they were rebelling against him. The Lord sent these serpents as a punishment to wake them up because they were so focused on this world, on food, on their comfort. They forgot about their liberation. They forgot that they were children of God. And so this apparent affliction was actually their remedy. When they recognized this, their sin for what it is, they had the opportunity to be healed. But those who were only focused on this world died in their sins. So too our Lord is saying, unless you recognize who he is, particularly on the cross, unless we recognize the horror and the ugliness of our sin, that sin that is embodied on the person of the crucified Christ, unless we see in ourselves that mirror that Jesus holds up to us, the ugliness of our sin, we will not be healed. Unless we see who Jesus is taking on our personal sins, then we cannot be healed. So at this Mass, as we might be tempted to grumble against, against the Lord, as we might be tempted to, to focus only on the things of this world, on our comforts or, or discomfort, as we focus on all of those ways that we might be grumbling internally, let us look on the crucified Lord. Let us ask Him to hold that mirror up to us so we can see the, the ugliness of our own sin, we can see the ugliness of our own selfishness and ask for that grace to be healed. And as we unite ourselves to this sacrifice of the Mass, that Calvary that is made present on every altar, let us spiritually be united to that event and pray for the grace of resurrection, to experience the seeds of this resurrection in this world that will grow and germinate into eternal life. Praise be Jesus Christ, now, now and forever. forever.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Michael our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gather here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, but they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious of our Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that, through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ your Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, 
the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us for the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place for refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit to us, we beseech you, into their company, now weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ your Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them. Fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. My Lord Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, Angel. defend us in battle. Be our protection against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And you, thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking to ruin his souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Proceed, probably verse two. Prayer of Thanksgiving. Most sweet Lord Jesus, pierce my inmost heart with the most dear and most bracing wound of your love. Pierce it with true, serene, apostolic, and most holy charity, that my soul may ever yearn and melt with love for you and the desire to possess you. May my soul be drawn toward you and overwhelmed with the hope of entering your courts. May it long to be dissolved and to be with you. Grant that my soul may hunger for you, the bread of angels and the food of holy souls, our supersubstantial bread, having in itself every sweetness and good taste, having the delightfulness of all that charms my heart. In my heart always long for you and find its nourishment in you, on whom the angels long to gaze, and may my inmost heart be filled with the sweetness of your savor. May my heart thirst for you, the fountain of life and of wisdom, of knowledge and of eternal life, the torrent of pleasure and the richness of the house of God. May my heart always draw near to you, seek you, catch sight of you, be drawn to you, and arrive at your presence. May my heart think of you, speak of you, do all things that it does for the glory of your name, with humility and care and affection and delight, with eagerness and with deep feeling, and with perseverance to the end. Thus may you alone always be my hope, my confidence, my joy, my rest, my tranquility, my peace, all that charms me, my fragrance, my sweetness, my food, my nourishment, my refuge, my help, my wisdom, my portion, my possession, my treasure. In you may my mind and my heart be fixed and secure and rooted forever without any change. Amen.